3-2 pitch, one out, runner takes off, batter strikes out. Now the runner's out for interference because the batter, two rules involved under 6015, stepped out of the box and interfered, impeded the catcher's play on the runner. Therefore, the runner's out for interference. And then 6033, the illegal act of stepping out of the box and hindering the catcher's play. Hyde will argue, but it's because the rule is, I don't know why it's not better known. Here is the batter's box line. Did the batter step across it? Yes, he did. And why was the catcher's throw so bad? You could bail him out, bail him out. This is not a bailout. Look at the catcher's left foot. It's angled toward first base. A catcher will not angle his foot toward first base on a throw to second, unless he's trying to avoid the batter's foot. That means that if the batter's foot is illegally positioned outside the box, it's interference. Here's a play from Anaheim in 2017 we diagrammed. Toronto was called for interference. Look how far the batter's out of the box. The catcher had to move over, slide step over quite a bit. The umpire had that perfect inside keyhole angle to see the alteration to the, to the catcher's throwing motion. And that's why he called it. It doesn't require contact. That's a rules myth. But it, the myth causes a whole bunch of arguments now, doesn't it? And what else? I think Brandon Hyde had time to go look at the replay down. If you're going to watch the video, see why the catcher's foot is badly placed. Why? Because of the batter's illegal act. That's interference. 